Hey, Gregor Churro here. So, crazy new discoveries to like share with you and like, wow. So, I figured out finally how this thing like properly works. I'm gonna explain it now to you and hopefully it makes sense because it makes sense to me. Um, and funny synchronicity, I was just about to start this video and I got a call from my friend Romeo who's at Marco Ronan's house right now um, to wish me a happy birthday being we both have the same birthday. And that was like yesterday. It's the 13th now. September 12th, me and Romeo. Virgos. Very lovely. And, uh, um, and he went down to Indian Wells to go visit Marco for an art festival. Um, and he got back from Burning Man. Ah, I wish I was at Burning Man. Burning Man's just like crazy and out there and so much fun. Um, but I didn't get to go this year, so hopefully next year. My goal is to show up at Burning Man with a flying spaceship, reveal the technology to the world. It'd be awesome, you know. Huge sort of creativity. So, if you look at this guy, these guys are nice and evenly spaced, which some of you on YouTube have been doing and been ignoring the Vortex Math Max. Well, guess what? You haven't been ignoring the Vortex Math Max. You've been doing it just right. So, there's been like a fundamental flaw in the interpretation of the patterns. And this is the biggest thing I've been saying over the past few months, is a lot of us understand the Vortex Math Max and see the patterns, but we don't know how to connect them with actual physics. Well, that's what I've been really working on, and it makes sense now. Um... And the biggest rule in physics, just get my number map, just keep looking at my pretty little number map. The key to the universe is like right here, or at least one of the three. Um, is everyone knows the, the, the trinary, the triplet sequence. And people relate the 396, 39, or 693 pattern to the magnetic field and the, uh, uh, and the doubling having circuits to the. Um, oh, what's it called? The electric field, you could say. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like clicked into me uh, a couple days ago that didn't make sense. Well, um, it made sense to me yesterday because on my birthday, someone gave me a little bit of MDMA, which some of you might not agree with, but it's what got me into poi. It's, you could say it's a drug for flow. It helps your mind see flow. Literally, I sat there for hours and I played with this thing in my head and how energy actually flows. And boom, it made sense. It made beautiful sense. Um, and so I'm going to relay this uh, psychedelic realization with you and the math to back up the spiritual experience with the rational mind. So, um, the biggest thing is we have the, we have the trinary circuit, which will start uh, right here, going across. Six, uh, so it's going this way. So it, um, it's going northeast southwest if you're looking at this, okay? And uh, you can find a map like this online. I'll put in the link of the caption. Um, but there's also a perpendicular pattern going the other direction. This is the least pattern that's talked about with anyone, and it's so important um, because this is the electric field. What everyone's been wiring the whole time has been the magnetic field lines, and we're looking at the electric field lines. We want to wire the electric field lines and the magnetic field lines create themselves. They're perpendicular to each other. Okay, they're transverse waves, and uh, basically with the doubling circuit and the having circuit, this helped me it made me understand this is reading Ed, La, the guy from Coral Castle. He wrote a book about how he did what he did, understanding magnetic poles. And he talked about north magnetic poles and south magnetic poles, and, and the concept of magnets, which we usually call, call ether, and how this all flows together. And it made sense um, that when the doubling circuit, even though this is a, this is a big thing. They're both doubling circuits, and they're both having circuits. Because, for some reason, because you see them moving, in, the patterns moving in opposite directions, you assume the flow moves in opposite directions, which is true. But they're moving in opposite directions. Both are having, or both are doubling. And that goes the same for the perpendicular direction, which is a sequence of numbers, 18, num it's an 18 number unique sequence, versus the 6. And they're, it's going in the same direction the whole time. It doesn't flip-flop like the having doubling circuit. But, there's, it's divided into two sets, 9 and 9. And so, if I'm reading, we're going to start with a, a 1. We go 1, 6, 5, 2, 9, 7, 4, 3, 8. Um, oh, actually, that's a hard... Let me go to the one that's in the middle. This is the whole 18. So let's start. Right, 1, 6, 5, 2, 9, 4, 3, 8. And then we go backwards. 8, 3, 4, 7, 9, 2, 5, 6, 1. So it's an oscillation. It has 9 in the middle. Um, and if you draw this out, nice little wave with the numbers, you will see the oscillation. But why does it go 1-1 one, one at the top and 8-8 eight, eight at the bottom? This is 
But Marco Rowan told me, is one of the patterns she doesn't understand is that 1 8 oscillation. 1 8, 1 8, 1 8. Well, that is the electric oscillation. Um, well, the 3 9 6 is the magnetic os oscillation. And when it hits 8 8, it's actually because the, it's, a, it's an oscillation. It refers to at what level of the, of the oscillation it's in. When it's at 8, it's at 8 ninths oscillation. And then it goes over the top, and that's 8, eight again, which is 8 ninths oscillation. And then it goes down to um, the next number, which is uh, 6 ninths, and then 4 ninths, and then 2 ninths, then 0. It works in 2, two ninths se segments. Um, go figure. And, uh, and what you can f realize with this is each electric line is offset by 2. So you got a plus 8. And then two down, we got a plus eight. Two down is a plus eight. Now, what I realized when I started playing around with all this is basically each one is firing every. Um, it, it's going around and firing in in um, sets of nine, essentially. And so let's let's explain how this coil actually works. Now, if we wrap it, flip flopped. And so instead of having um, uh, a single space, you're having them all lined up perfectly. So these look like spaces because I just have wrapped them once. There are two circuits on a traditional rotating coil with the correct geometry. This is the correct actual geometry for a rotating coil. This is my least favorite coil at the moment, which is because I already had a toroid built for it. Um, is uh, I've been looking at pentagonal, tri uh, triadic, and also octave three, five, and eight, which are all um, and two. Those are, the, those are the four new coil structures that I've been researching, making the most sense. Awesome thing. Two, three, five, eight. Are all Fibonacci numbers. Um, I also have discovered, and I'll show in another video. There's just so much I've discovered lately that the pentagonal coil relates to Stonehenge, which is awesome. It's the actual Stargate and the ratio for that, because it's it's a, it's a double coil. I haven't fully understood. It's with a pentagon and a pentacle, um, and the pentagon. The, the ratio for that relates the exact same as the actual Stargate ratio in the show. Go figure. <laughs> okay, I'm just like so excited. It's going to be like all over the place. Hopefully my energy is good. I'm so excited. I'm still liking my birthday energy, all right? Um, so we're going to explain a resonant circuit and how this guy works. We got two leads on the outside right here. I got my eye in the middle. There we go. Okay, we got two leads on the outside right here. We're going to charge this one negative and this one positive. Okay? So what happens on this positive one, we suck out all the, the electrons. We suck them out and we stick them onto this circuit. Okay? So one circuit sound negatively charged and one is positively charged. And when the electrons are getting pulled out, they're moving through the circuit. And when they're getting pushed in, they're getting pushed through the circuit. Okay? Now let's say this one's fully discharged and one's fully charged. So one's positive and one's negative. And they're oscillating or going positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay? So we're getting a stable capacitor and it's charged. And I've done this and I would show this to you but I've blown two of my um, digital multimeters playing around with this guy. Go figure. So I need some new resistors for him. So now it's charged and this also has a magnetic field built up in both circuits. Okay? Um, now, what happens is there's no more charge moving. It's just fully charged, but we have these magnetic fields built up with all this energy. It's like, um, oh, do I have any? I did. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, I can demonstrate this with poi. Okay. We got some fire poi here. Woohoo! You guys are great to sand fire. So, this is how say a magnetic field works when it's your back EMP. So the magnetic field's charging up and spinning and it's spinning and it's spinning. Now we have this magnetic field built all the way up, this double helix. But now it has to discharge. There's all this energy built up into it. It needs to come apart. Woo! Okay? But what happens is you're getting pressure in the opposite directions. So um, they have to reverse. And so the one pulled in the electrons um, is spinning one direction but is now reversing which wants to push the electrons out. The negatively charged circuit is going to push the electrons out because of its, its decharging. 
uh, or the magnetic field's collapsing. And the magnetic field's collapsing on the positively charged circuit, but it's going to pull the electrons in like a vacuum. And it's going to pull them back into the circuit. Um, and then it's going to charge up. And if you have the timing right, and the magnetic field is in balance with the um, electric field created by the capacitance, then it's just going to bounce back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Cool, okay? Now you can get more circuits put on this. This just has two circuits. And for this to really operate the way it's supposed to with the nested vortices, you need 18 circuits. That is big. This will not work without 18 circuits. Whatever type of wiring structure you want, it needs 18 circuits. Um, that sort of has to do with the 18 step scale. But it's the only way this will fire correctly at all. Um, and that, I could go on for a while with the whole 18 circuits. Um, but also, that means you have nine positive electric circuits and nine negative electric circuits at a time. But you also have um, um, but varying different levels. They aren't all nine positively charged and all nine negatively charged. They're, they're oscillating um, all at a, the frequency. I don't even know what the frequency is. It's nine steps. Um, and so the best way to do this is if this was, say, um, say these were 18 circuits on this. We're just looking at a little chunk right here, okay? And this is the first circuit, and this is the second third circuit, third circuit, fourth circuit, okay? Let's just say that. Um, if this one fires, then the one on the opposite side is going to be discharging. So this is what this is going to be set up as, but let's say we replicate this with a whole bunch of circuits. So there's a little bit of lines in between them, but let's just use these, okay? Um, and the, this one fires, and so it's charging up. The opposite one, facing it directly on the other side of the other circuit, will be discharging. One ninth of a period of time later, this one is going to be firing, but this one's going to be discharging, becoming positively charged, and the opposite side is going to be neg becoming negatively charged. Then one ninth of a cycle later, this one's going to be um, becoming charged with electrons, and the opposite one's going to be discharging, and that's all it does. Boom, 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 boom. Nine steps going around um, with two circuits being involved each time where you're transferring the energy back and forth, back and forth. And it's right there in the patterns. You just look in the patterns, it's all ran out. It's simple, it's beautiful. And when you have that happening, the magnetic field is firing in the other direction. That's what a lot of people understand is the magnetic field fires. It breathes. Breathing out, breathing in. Except it's doing that two ways. And that's why the magnetic field has a frequency. Um, and so the North Pole magnets go out, go around, come back in. The South Pole magnets go out, come around, back in. So we have two circuits, a doubling and having circuit. You get both together and you get your scalar field, um, which is your 396, your scalar field. Ooh. And then you got your horizontal and vertical fields. Um, and the horizontal field, which should be on this, it's vertical. It should be flip-flopped. The 1-9 should be on the horizontal. And I think this is a 1-4 map. If you look at Greg Vogt's work, there's three of these maps in existence. One that the vertical and horizontal axis are multiples of one or four, two and four, or two or one and two, um, and really all three of these work for the same concept. It gets more complex after that, like deciding between like 3D space. You can take those 3D maps, put them together, and you have 3D space. Um, but that's a whole other discussion. Let's keep talking about this. Another key thing to make this work, which a lot of people don't understand is so important is the wire.